everyone, this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I do a rendition of a white hydrangea on this green glass bottle. I am going to be using three A Magic paintbrushes. If you're interested in purchasing these, you can see a link down below under my affiliate links. I am using a number 10, a number 6, and a number 4. The paints I'll be using for this design are Forest Moss, Wicker White, Licorice, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, and Thicket. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with this design. I am going to be using the number 6 a magic paintbrush to begin with and I mixed up a combination of the wicker white and the licorice to come up with this very light gray. You can use any colors you want. I know typically a lot of times they're blue. I think there's even purple ones. There's just a variety of colors of hydrangeas so you can use whatever color you want. I just decided to go with using the white with a little bit of gray for the purpose of this video. Alright, so I'm just touching each side of my brush into the, color, the different colors. Again, this is my combination of licorice and wicker white along with wicker white. I am just going to start off by doing just some different sprays here of the hydrangeas. and I'm going to move my plate back so I have room to move my bottle around. And I'm trying to get good coverage. I have just my process here when I begin. I removed all the tags or the, the stickers that were on the bottle, however you want to reference the stickers. Remove those with soap water. Oops, a little bit of Gooby Gone or Goo Gone, however you say it and then cleaned it with water, then cleaned it with Dawn soap, and then went over it with rubbing alcohol, uh, little uh, towelettes kind of things that are already filled with rubbing alcohol because I'm having a hard time purchasing it, you know, along with a lot of other things in our society right now that are not easy to get. That happens to be one thing that's not easy to get. Go figure, right? Someday, someday in the near future, hopefully, we'll be back to our normal society, I hope. But anyways, once I got done doing all that, I wiped off the bottle just to try to get any of the goo gone off because it's very oily. Now, with the way this paint is covering on this bottle, you could just leave it like this or you could do some drying time and give it a hit with a hair dryer or heat gun just to maybe be able to go over and give it a second coat. For the purpose of this video I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep painting but I'm just saying that, that that's a possibility if you want just so that you might get better coverage the thicker you apply your paint, the better coverage you're going to have. It's going to be more opaque and that will add to the durability of your design. Now if you're someone who, I know a lot of people question this, the paint is durable, especially if you put it on a little bit thicker. And that doesn't mean it's got on here to where it'll bubble when you paint. You just want to make sure that it's good coverage so when it comes out of the oven, it's not going to be as likely to scratch if something hits it, comes up against it, that type of thing. Now, don't sit there and try to scrape it off. If you do that, of course, you're going to get scrapes in it. If you're taking care of it nicely, then it has a better chance of not being scratched. On the wine bottles, 
you know, the bottles that I paint, it's not as imperative because they're not going to be washed and handled as frequently as, like say, a wine glass. So, you know, the durability doesn't play as big of a part in something like that as it would a wine glass. But of course you still want it to be nice, especially if you're giving it to somebody as a gift and that type of thing. But just keep in mind, you know, the, the better the coat you put on it, the more opaque, the longer your design is going to last. If you're painting on wine glasses or something that's going to be used quite frequently and washed, you know, hand washing is probably the best way to go. Not a requirement. You can place these in the top rack of a dishwasher, but you know, just to avoid a brace of cleaners, a brace of cloths, you know, when you're cleaning your your product, just so that you don't scrape it. Definitely only top rack of a dishwasher, and I would like to add to that that you want to make sure that the dishwasher is not commercial grade because often those get very very hot and that heat will take the paint off. You also never want to have your painted items sitting in water because that can loosen up the paint as well. Now I do try to bake all of mine unless I do feel that I have it on too thick and I'm afraid that it, it will bubble because if the paint bubbles, it pops and you have like pock marks and that's not something you really want. Once you've worked so hard on a design you want to be able to use it, right? So and typically speaking a lot of times designs look prettier if you do go over them again because it does fill them in a little bit more but it's not always required. This is a very easy design one that you know, is pretty common on my site because I like to provide easy painting designs so that anybody can feel creative. I think that's something that can help us as far as you know, if we're depressed or just wanting something to keep our mind off of things or give us something to do, another hobby to pick up. Glass painting is so much fun. If you're looking for a product that's affordable and something that's easy to learn the techniques on, I highly recommend wax paper. Just that it has a slippery surface to it. It's very affordable, disposable, and you can learn some of the painting techniques by using that. Just getting getting your hand adjusted to the different techniques. I find that, you know, my hand is trained. You know, when I draw flowers, I tend to gravitate towards a certain design. When I paint, I tend to gravitate towards a certain design or shape. And that's what I'm trying to, to say is that you just, you need to train your hand. You need to train your hands. Also, a point I'd like to point out is that I am a left-handed painter. I'm left-handed, period. But I'm a left-handed painter, so if I'm going a direction that you, for some reason, keep trying to go and you keep thinking, man, this just doesn't seem to feel right, go the opposite direction from me. So if I start from right to left, which is pretty typical for me, you need to go from left to right when you're doing a stroke. All right, so I've got a couple clusters, or three clusters here. This is kind of what I did on my sample paper. I always do my draw or paintings on a piece of paper before I actually put them onto a surface and I just find it helps now. Do I have to make adjustments? Absolutely. 
sometimes my painting surface is not nearly as large as what my painting paper was. So I do. I try to get them as similar as possible. Okay, now for the centers, I do a, a stylus, and I forgot to mention that. So it's a dotting stylus. I'm going to go into the burnt umber and just make a few little small dots in the center of each one of these flowers. Again, nothing monumental here. Anybody can do this that can, is able to pick up a paintbrush or a dotting stylus or you know whatever you want to paint with. Making it easy then just coming in here putting the dots in. And they don't have to be real close together. You can spread them out if you wish. But I thought the white and the gray would be pretty on this green bottle. Now with these bottles you can just use them as a conversation piece, just a little piece to add to your home decor, make gifts out of them. They're great lights if you put little little fairy lights and I like to use the wine bottle toppers, you know, where it looks like the wine cork bottles with lights on them. And, you know, you could actually drill a little hole in this, the back, but however you want to do it. Or just leave it without lights, make it a vase. I want to try to get into doing some cutting and making them more like vases. And then there goes my Barking dog. Sorry about that. I have my other one downstairs here, and hopefully, she won't be joining her sister in the barking. I think she's too tired. Now, if you wanted to spruce this up and maybe add more of a pop of color, you can do that too. but I'm sticking with the browns. Sorry about the barking. I was going to try to kick her out, but she didn't want to go. So hopefully she'll behave. Like I said, if you want to do even a pop of white into these, or a pop of yellow, any of that can you know, really add, add to it. But I'm just going to stick with the browns. That's perfect for me. Alright, next thing I'm going to do double load my number 10 brush into the forest moss and the thicket. And then I like to add a little bit of the brown, just the um, burnt umber in it. You can even add some light into it. But I'm going to start off first of all by doing just some of my wiggly leaves. And they're a little dark so might be a little hard to see them on this bottle. But then I come in here with my forest moss. I think I'm going to tip a little bit of white into it. White has a lot of pigment in it so it has a tendency to uh, cover better. And again that's a, a big concern for me when I'm painting on glass is to get good coverage. Okay, so I'm going to come back here, come down here, like that, and then do a pull down the center, just like that. Pretty easy. Tap into that. If you want to do all light on the outside of the leaf, you can do that too. That kind of helps when you're doing it on a green bottle. Oh my goodness, I'm trying to get it in here. Sorry guys if I'm floating off the screen. Anyhow, I'm going to go back in here. And just sometimes you might even have to lift up as you're doing this just so that you're not dragging the paint off. That really can vary. 
And then just put a stem through the center, just like that. Easy peasy. I'll go back over this one again. I feel like I got a little bit off here. And you can just go over them as much as you want. If you feel like you've you know, didn't turn out the way you wanted it to, by all means go back over it. It's fine. and sometimes it's kind of hard to see on this bottle but it looks it looks good all right so we're going to go down here i'm going to keep doing this i think i'm going to do the outer side being white again on this one just pull it down it doesn't have to be that big and you can do the brown you can do the green and the brown on the one side if you want i just keep wiggling my brush as i go and then just put a little pull down the center. Like that one. Don't think I like that part too much, so let's do it again. I'm going to come back over here. Like that. And then come back down through the center. Very pretty. And if you feel like, you know, you don't want to do a lot of these leaves, because I am very heavy on the leaves, I'll be honest with you. If you're new to my channel, you may not know that, but I do like leaves a lot. So I have a tendency to put, them, put a lot of leaves in my, my designs. So if you're following me and you say, oh, I'm not really a big leaf person, I wouldn't put that many, then don't. I honestly want you to have free range to to create the designs as you would. Just use my my designs as a starting point. Doesn't have to be something that you follow identically. As a matter of fact, I kind of like it if you don't. You know, just use your own your own thoughts on it. Put your own little tweak to it and call it a day. And I'm going to pull this here. Alright. It's fun. I mean, like I said, I, I love to paint, so get like that. It's just sometimes can be hard to get the coverage that you desire when you are painting. So that's the probably the biggest challenge I have because I do want want it to be you know thick but not too thick. Like I said you just kinda have to learn learn by practicing what actually equates to good coverage. Because like I said it's very disheartening and I've had it happen a few times where I've worked really hard on something and it comes out and it's the bubbles are in it that have popped and you know because it's been too thick. Now the one thing nice is with this paint you don't have to bake it. So if you're finding that you're getting really thick with the paint and you sorry I'm trying to go over this you don't want to put it in the oven because you're afraid that it might pop and don't. You don't have to. Okay, I am going to go this direction over here. Oh, and hopefully I don't touch anything. It's my biggest problem is trying to keep from getting my fingers into the other paint that I've already painted and ruining my design. Not fun. Okay, so you can wiggle or you can just graciously tap it. I go over it again because I want it to be a little bit thicker. My hand jumped. That wasn't good. I'll do it again here. I go 
little twitch in my hand and it jumped. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm going to go over here. That's why I say, you see, I'm going over them more than once a lot of times, and that's fine. Because I want it to be, I want it to look the way I want it to be. Alright, so there you have it. Now, I'm going to do one more. Again, I'm trying very hard not to, not to get this, not to stick my fingers in it or touch the paper. So I've got at least, at least four colors in these leaves. So the forest moss, I have a little bit of the white, I have the thicket, and I have the burnt umber. I'm going to go over this again. Make sure I've got you on camera here. Do my little pull through here, like that. I think I'll make look at this just one more time over here. There we go. All right, so one more thing I'm going to do. I'm not done yet, of course. I have some more leaves coming. I am going to take my number four, a magic brush. I am going to do some smaller leaves. I am just putting them in, in to the forest moss. I'm going to take some of the gray that I've worked with and I'm going to just start doing some of my smaller leaves. And I chose them to do it with this type of color combination so that it stands out a little bit more. And then I can just do lightly some little pulls in here. Now you can do, you know, just kind of do some wavy little like that. Anytime you're painting that, if your brush feels like it's too full of paint, by all means, just have some paper towel there. Have, uh, you know, a towel or something and just wipe it off. I'm going to take that real lightly, just kind of pull it through here, come down, come down this way, kind of pull it out that way. Again, it's just very easy. And with a little bit of this gray in here, it actually makes it pop. I mean, you can see it. You can actually go over your other leaves a little bit. You don't have to. But you can, it's okay. Because you know when you put together a flower piece in real life, all your leaves and stuff are not just going to be straight. They're going to have some movement, some curves to them, overlapping, that kind of thing. So that works well. Just gonna do it a few more times here. Like I said, I'm a, I can get hooked into my leaves and be doing those all day, and you're probably thinking, okay, that's enough now. <laughs> Don't get carried away. To keep reminding myself. Alright. Yeah, let me figure out. Yep, yeah, I think that's pretty good. You get the gist, right? It gets pretty. What a pretty green bottle. Again, you could just do the front, or you can do all around, which typically I do all around when I'm selling these. I don't just do it on the front. I hope you like this video. If you do, give me a big thumbs up. New to my channel, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And before you leave, share this on your social network with all your family and friends. Pretty easy. Just hit that share button underneath the video. Gives you the options of where you want to share it, and there you're good to go. 
And until the next time, you stay safe and healthy and have a good one.